Okay, it's 2.45, so welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Adam Scheinberg. I'm the Vice President of Information Technology for Massey Services and the Chair of the Orlando Tech Council. And I'm joined today by President Alexander Cartwright of the University of Central Florida. And uh, we're gonna be spending the next little bit here uh, having a little chat about UCF and about uh, technology in Orlando. Uh, welcome, President Cartwright. Uh, it's great to be here, Adam. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for being generous with your time. I'm looking forward to having a conversation here. I'm gonna kick it right off by talking a little bit about partnerships. Over the past couple of decades, UCF's become known as the Partnership University. How important are partnerships for a university and what's your vision for partnerships with UCF? You know, partnerships are critical nowadays uh, for universities. As we continue to see uh, universities change and uh, continue to be a bigger part uh, of how we build uh, the economy, how we work uh, collaboratively, how we work with the arts, so uh, all of the things that we can be doing uh, collaboratively, within, collaboratively within the community uh, certainly can be further enriched through partnerships. And that's what we are interested in, right? Is that I see the university as what I call a porous university in that we don't know where it starts, we don't know where it ends, we flow in and out of it. And as you go along the different pores, uh, you know, like a sponge, as you go along, you actually encounter all sorts of different uh, uh, knowledge and, and different things that can actually improve the entire community, but also improve the work that's being done by the faculty here. So the more we can get that mixing, the more we can get those interactions with the people around here, because we have incredible talents within the Orlando region, the more that helps us to be an even stronger institution. And so we're looking forward to continuing those partnerships uh, uh, and, and in fact, expanding them if possible as, as we move into the future. As somebody who's lived here for roughly 20 years, certainly the university is has been woven through the community and uh, you see people from the university serving our community and people within the community appearing at the university and uh, it's certainly been that way for some time. Yeah, and I look forward to the day when I've actually get to, to meet all those people <laughs> in person. Uh, right now, in person. You know, it's, it's been that we meet uh, uh, virtually. But you're right. The you know, If you look at the partnerships that we've had, um, you know, the things we're doing downtown, the activities that have happened with a number of different industry partners, Siemens and others, um, those have all, uh, again, helped us, but also, uh, we hope, helped our community. Um, on that note, the new downtown campus has already spawned a series of uh, tech plans and relocations. How will UCF further engage tech companies and startups specifically within our community? You know, the uh, downtown in incubator has certainly uh, been successful in, in attracting and continuing to contribute to the, to the region. And we intend to continue to do that, right? Is that one of the things that you want to do as an institution is when you have those incredible uh, faculty, incredible students and others who are doing innovative work, you want them to be connected uh, with your community. You want them to be connected with, uh, with industry and, and, and thinking about how we continue to move the economy forward, but also uh, to improve the entire uh, environment uh, within uh, Central Florida. So I look at it and realize that, you know, our 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 activities downtown, uh, certainly with the incubator and the translation, trans, uh, translation of different types of technologies that we are interested in getting out there, that's one way to do it. But the other way to do it, too, is through all of the activities we have around uh, education, right? Uh, we have a tremendous uh, uh, activity down there with our Florida Interactive Entertainment Academy. Um, you know, it's the number one game development program in the in the country by Princeton Review. And certainly when you go down there, you see that, right? And that also helps to build the ecosystem that drives uh, the, the growth that we're gonna be seeing down there. And EA Sports uh, will be moving uh, there. And I anticipate that then you, you sort of create an ecosystem within the creative village that's going to attract even more people, right? You, you, you know this, I mean, the people 
uh, innovators want to be around other innovators and they want to have access uh, to each other as much as they want to have access to technologies. And so anything we can do to, to help with that, um, that's going to help to move uh, all of us forward. There is a symbiotic relationship where the investment that we make into Orlando ties into UCF and the investment that UCF makes ties into Orlando. So um, that's certainly been visible for us from the outside as well. Yeah, and I think we even have more opportunities, right? Is that, um, you know, one of the things that I believe, uh, uh, really believe in is that we produce so many um, tremendous uh, graduates, uh, talented graduates that we're interested in, of course, working with the community and thinking about how we continue to diversify uh, what we're doing uh, in the region. Uh, and uh, we are in a position where we can certainly be looking at how do we provide the workforce that's needed? How do we help them to be successful? How do we recruit companies to the region? And one of the things that people look for is the availability of talent. And we have the talent here. So um, we're looking forward to even being able to do more in that area. So you just mentioned diversity. Let me pivot for just a moment. Back in March at your confirmation, you said, and I want to quote, I'm here to serve all students. Every student, every student deserves to have opportunity. Part of the Orlando Tech Council's core mission is to increase diversity in the tech community and to better represent who we really are in the Central Florida region. So what is UCF doing in terms of being more diverse and inclusive? I'm speaking in terms of students, faculty, community, to attract minority and disadvantaged students and faculty. Yeah, you know, we, we're, we're an institution that has, has really been fortunate uh, in that, you know, we're a Hispanic serving institution. Uh, we have uh, about 27% right now uh, uh, Latinx. Uh, we also are an incredibly diverse institution of the student body, right? We're about 50% uh, minority. Uh, so. There, that, um, that creates a vibrancy uh, that few places have. And it, it, there's so much. Uh, I talk about the excellence from difference and the fact that when, when you're able to leverage and learn from each other, your backgrounds, your experiences, um, your uh, lived experiences uh, uh, certainly impact what you're doing. And I am a big believer that our job as, as the academy is that we need to provide uh, people with opportunity. And we need to provide them an opportunity uh, to be successful, right? And when, when we look at um, our students and when we look at this region, I see tremendous potential uh, in, in all of our students. But you know, when, when you talk about performance, uh, performance is equal to your potential minus the interferences. And so what we need to do is figure out how we limit the interferences that are affecting our students from reaching their maximum potential. And those interferences can be many things, right? They're financial, they're, they can be uh, uh, the environment they're in, uh, not being supported, um, not feeling valued, um, having people look at them because they might look different um, and those are all things that impact your performance. We need to create an environment where we unleash that potential and that people are able to achieve their maximum. And that's what we're going to be focused on here for certainly uh, uh, for the student body that we have. But more importantly, we need to do the same thing for our faculty and our staff, right? If we can create in collaboration with this entire uh, uh, Orlando region, if we can create an institution that is known for its commitment to making sure that people can reach their maximum potential, that is known for its commitment to the diversity, equity, and inclusion that we want to have. Um, I think then that helps us to attract like-minded people to this region who can further transform this region because they know they have a world-class research university that's committed to it. They know that the entire region is committed to it and they know it's just gonna be a wonderful place to live. And that's going to help all of us. And in the long term, uh, economically, there's a huge advantage to, to, to thinking about how we leverage our differences, how we leverage um, the fact that when we come together and we have all those different 
uh, backgrounds and we're a diverse group, we come to different solutions than if we are all uh, the same. And we come to a better solution. And so that's going to help this institution, but it's also going to help the entire region. So um, I just believe firmly that it we owe it to the next generation to give them, give everybody access to highest quality education they can get in a public institution uh, where where they have they can have I can access it at a reasonable cost, and then they can go on and do the great things we know they're capable of, um, and that's just a wonderful thing to be able to do that. I'm not sure that I'm entitled to speak on behalf of the entire region right now, but I would like to and say yes, please to all of that. That sounds great. So. You talked about unleashing potential. Let me ask you a few questions specifically about that. UCF announced more than $200 million in sponsored research this last fiscal year. That is a pretty big milestone. What's the next goal for research funding at UCF and how will UCF get uh, that? That's a great question. And, and people are probably all gonna be wondering, uh, you know, my, all the faculty and everybody. I, 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 the way that I like to put it is that this is an institution that within the last four years, increased 40% its research expenditures, right? If we continue on that trajectory, and let's say in five years, we wanna continue at the same pace, and let's say we increase by 50%, then the natural next goal is let's get to 300 million, right? And, and I believe actually we can get there because we have so many talented people here already. And what we need to do is then think of how we reduce the administrative burdens that might be on some of them, how we give them the supports that they need. How do we work with our industry partners and start thinking about the collaborative research activities of the future? So no university on its own uh, is going to be able to, to build out all of the infrastructure that is needed to be exceptional in lots of different areas. But I do believe that if by working together, right, uh, the types of things we do uh, in, in gaming, the types of things we can do in, in uh, XR, VR, uh, AR, AI, uh, all of those things, we can do a lot of those on our own. But think about a world where we actually are able to work collaboratively with the industries that are here, and we build a world-class facilities that benefit them and us simultaneously. We reduce the cost to each of us, and we expand the talent that is available to each of us. That then can help us to just continue to push our economy forward, uh, continue to, to build this area as a world-class technological leader. And I see that happening. And, and I, I look forward to the day when, then when we can look back and say, yeah, we built some things that are pretty special here. And other universities are all trying to come here and go, well, how did you do that? Um, I think we have that here. I think we can do that here because of the existing div diversification of our, our industries here, but the potential to even do more and attract people to this wonderful region. I think it's interesting that you, that you mentioned that when you hit 200 million, people immediately <laughs> say, when we hit 300 million. But there's an unintentional theme uh, that's tying these questions together, wherein, uh, we could really involve the community in more rather than just having UCF fund its own research. Uh, th there's opportunity for partnership that I think would benefit, especially people who would be involved oh, absolutely. in a conference like this. I, I, I think, you know, when you think about it, when you're able to work with a world-class university, you then right away have the opportunity to work with exceptional students, with exceptional faculty. And being around that quality of people uh, it, it helps your own business, uh, but, it, uh, but, it, but it also helps those students and they're going to come to you. And so you're getting uh, students after they've already worked with projects with the university that are ready to come in. And like I said, you know, nowadays, you, it isn't even sufficient now that we're preparing students for their first job. We really need to be thinking about that second job because everything is changing so rapidly, right? And they need to learn how to learn. And if we can help with that and start to create environments where they get used to how rapid the pace 
of change is, especially in the industries that we're talking about today, that actually then uh, creates an environment where they can go out and be successful because they've already proven they could do it uh, in, in, in this environment. Um, I think that's a win-win for everyone and one that helps us to continue to move our education programs forward, but also our research programs and thinking about what what is the future look like for the Orlando region. Um, tied into the unleash your potential here, um, although slightly less positive, COVID obviously has affected us all in myriad ways. <laughs> Other than the obvious, what kind of long-term impacts are you projecting for UCF in terms of enrollment and budgets, maybe even education and specializations? Oh, those are great questions, Adam. And we could we could spend the day on that topic. <laughs> uh, uh, but I'll I'll try to give the the quick uh, answer to it. Uh, one is I, I I fundamentally believe that this is a um, this is a transition and a change in higher education, a disruption of the way that we do business that is not going away, right? And if you think about uh, what that means for our future. Um, then certainly it, it means something for our staff and how we are going to do business as an institution, uh, where people are working from, how we run meetings. There's all of those things which businesses are going through the same uh, discussion. And, and I think there's a great opportunity there, by the way, for us to all work collaboratively about how do we maximize uh, the benefit from that while minimizing any uh, negatives that may happen because we are starting to have a much more distributed uh, workforce and how, how we're doing those things. Um, but, I, but I also think in terms of, of education, what you're seeing is a, a, a transition uh, to where we're going to ultimately be able to leverage the best of in-person and online. And that hybrid, that mixture of how we optimize the utilization of, of tools that are virtual, tools that can help us to be accessible wherever a student may be, uh, but also with the in-person where you can actually do more uh, hands-on and you can do uh, additional things directly with, with your students. I think you're gonna see um, a, a new uh, uh, emphasis on how we leverage all the technologies that are available to us. And everybody now is, for the most part, I think everybody is able to utilize those tools and to say at least at a minimum, I can get on here. Um, and, and, it, and, and, and it's amazing because it, it changes also access to, uh, for a lot of our students, right? Is that now sometimes, you know, when we used to do things before, right? You had office hours, you have all these other things and people have to come in person. There's all the parking and everything. And office hours can be digital. Right, there's some can be digital, but not all, by the way. Some you need to do it in person again because of how we do it. But there's so many things we can do differently uh, as an institution, and our job is going to be how we optimize that into the future. But that being said, I think that the opportunity for us, especially with uh, all the people that, that are around here that are in the digital uh, domain, is what does digital learning of the future look like? Right? And how do we leverage AI and VR and XR, everything that we are interested in, I think we need to be thinking about what is that, UCF has always been top 20 online uh, 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 institution. Everybody has now had to pivot and learned how to do some online, even though they're not using the terrific pedagogy that we are for our digital learning they at least are online. That means for us to maintain a competitive advantage, we need to rethink how are we using all the tools that are available and how do we um, infuse uh, new technologies into the way that we deliver our digital learning. And I think that's really where, where, what we're going to be pushing for in the near future and into the long term also. Um, but it's going to be a hybrid to me and it's going to be a mixture of virtual uh, and in in person because there's there's still some real benefits from being face to face in person on a university campus 
I'm sure that's true. My kids frequently say things like when COVID is over. And uh, I sometimes have to explain, uh, you can't cram the genie back into the bottle for some of these things. Correct. And uh, we will we will rethink some, some very long-term uh, behaviors. Uh, everything from just the way that we shop in a grocery store. Um, I, I joke about even blowing out a birthday cake. In retrospect, I think about how many times I ate what people had just blown. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But more importantly, education, I agree. There, there's opportunity for uh, significant change. And we're all looking for, uh, for leadership locally uh, to explore that. Yeah. And we have some great partners here, right? Valencia, Seminole State College. We have a lot of great partners here that I think we need to think even, uh, you know, how, how we do a lot of this uh, for the benefit of the region. And so the more that we could be uh, working together and continue to great programs we already have with the Direct Connect and other things, that's going to benefit all of us. Let's talk a little about Central Florida here. Coming into the community, what were some perceptions you had about strengths and weaknesses of the Orlando region? You know, I, I, I have to admit that I didn't know a lot about uh, the Orlando region, right? Uh, so we've got a place to start now. You know, Disney and Universal and putt putt golfing and all the tourism and other things that that you hear of when you're from a uh, from a distance. Um, and uh, uh, what is what has become obvious to me, and it's very difficult when you're when we're going through uh, COVID and all. You know, I've been here now the whole time. We've we've been in the pandemic, and so very limited opportunities to actually interact with people. Very limited number of opportunities to even see the region. Um, but I will say this, that what I've taken away from this is the number of people here that I'm just excited to get to know, that I have a vision that and a belief and a confidence. And, and this is the important part. This region is confident that, that we can do things differently and that we can be at the leading edge in so many ways. And we're willing to take those chances. That's very, very difficult to replicate at other locations. And so when I look at our university, I see that here. Right? I see a university that's incredibly entrepreneurial, uh, really willing to just do whatever it takes to get things done. Um, but I think that's a spirit that's common in this area. right? And also, uh, in addition to that, which I, which I love, it's, it's sort of this... Um, uh, and and I'm, I mean this in a really good way. It's sort of a down to earth, like like we'll just do what it takes, right? We're gonna just get things done. We're you know this is what we do. We'll roll up our sleeves, do the work. We'll make things happen. Um, that to me uh, makes me realize that yeah, it's gonna be difficult right now, uh, and the, and the and the challenges are gonna be difficult into the near future. But I'm extremely optimistic for what's going to happen in this region as we as we work our way through this. And I think there's a lot of people who are going to help us uh, to make that a reality and and benefit to the benefit of this region. And and we will we will certainly be extremely strong again in the very near future. I know it is a common thread that people who live here feel we are poised to explode at any moment. And we may be right. Or we may be too naive to know any better. But that's okay too. But, but darn it, we're going to ride this way. I, I actually, I, I know what you're saying. And I agree with that, Adam, is that I think about that and I go, there's that optimism and there's that belief and confidence in what we can do uh, as a region. And I don't think it's misplaced. I, I actually don't, you know, uh, I, I, I think you can never accomplish great things if you can't envision them, right? Um, if you don't, believe that you have an opportunity to do it, you're just not going to be able to do it. Here, we believe that we can do these things. And what it means is now it's up to us to figure out how we execute on them. It's up to us to come together and, and leverage the resources that we have and share resources and think about our community and uh, the region uh, instead of our individual um, individual opportunities. Because I believe that as this whole region goes, so will all of our individual uh, uh, entities. We will, we will continue, all boats do truly rise. 
And so there's a real great opportunity for us to work together and make something truly special happen here. I couldn't agree more. I believe that there are several people um, who want to have an identity for Orlando, but don't feel um, competition with theme parks and tourist attractions that, that have given us our name. We see benefit as a region when UCF puts a competitive football team on the field. Um, you know, ev everybody can, can pick all the pieces that make us good and uh, put them on their flag and tout the region for all of the good things that happen here. Yeah, and, and the more that we can get together, the more that we can, um, actually, the more that I can get to know uh, all the strengths of the region and where those opportunities are for us to collaborate, uh, the more I think we'll be able to do uh, for, for the region. And so I'm looking forward to, uh, at least on a um, collaboration basis, to get to know more and more about what are the opportunities uh, for us to work uh, across uh, areas, uh, whatever those areas are, um, and how do we then uh, help to, to move the region forward. Um, we're gonna be growing and we're going to uh, continue to, to emphasize becoming an even greater uh, research university and we'll emphasize certain areas uh, of research because we can't do everything. And so you have to build on your strengths. And the best places that we can do that is when we get to a place where our strengths align well with the strengths of the region and we can all do them together. Then we'll see the type of growth that you're talking about. And so um, that's what I think uh, I wanna see us uh, emphasize uh, together. We've got about 15 minutes left and the most important question for me to ask, I believe is this one. Uh, one of the challenges that we often um, see in our region is this mass migration of Florida University graduates to markets outside of Florida. Do you think UCF can play a role in slowing that train? And if so, how, what are, what are your thoughts there if you don't mind? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, of course, I, I think we can, we can help with that. You know, if you look at uh, providers of, uh, for example, uh, engineers for aerospace and for space industries, uh, we're, we've been the top uh, provider uh, of that talent now for about six years in a row. Uh, and most of those are within this region. Uh, I think that it gets also at what you talked about. How do we align? How do we align? Our, our vision also with the vision of the vision of the region, how do we collaboratively go after and recruit companies to the region with the understanding that UCF is also there to help to deliver the workforce that is needed, right? And we can do those things, right? Is that we wanna make sure we have that partnership where people feel they can come right away and come out of UCF and go and work in those uh, companies uh, and that the companies feel that when they come here will be responsive to their needs, either in terms of certificates or other degrees or whatever it is that they might need to continue to build out the talent that is needed. We want to be that preferred partner. And I think that's the way that we're going to really um, grow the area. It's going to have to be collaborative and it's going to have to be us also being there to help the region to recruit uh, new companies and, and to build and help to advance the companies that are here, the more that we can have the uh, existing uh, companies understand what is available from UCF and what and get connected. You know, if you're if you need business uh, students, so if you people who graduate with business degrees or engineering. Can you get involved now and can your company start doing things now with UCF? And, and I'm not, I mean, I'm talking about just getting involved in some way so that you get to know uh, the incredible talents that are coming out of here. And then, yeah, the hope is you recruit them away. You recruit them to stay here in the region. Uh, we have so much talent that it'd be great if we could have a lot of that talent stay here. Um, but I think a lot of it comes from those interpersonal relationships and getting to know 
the uh, students as soon as possible and being involved early on in that process. Well, we're, we'll certainly be looking for a conversation when it's safe to actually meet people uh, on how we make yeah. some of that happen because there, there, are, there is a very large number of students at any given time in the Central Florida region. And um, uh, creating some additional stickiness would be great for uh, our economy here. Given the tech verticals that are finding strength and roots here in Central Florida, and I, I think your doctorate's actually in computer engineering. So we see things like chip engineering and manufacturing, optics, virtual and mixed and augmented reality. Do you see UCF curriculum responding to that? Is it more uh, forging forward on newer technology that's cutting edge, or is it pushing for a broader base of tech education? What does that look like? Uh, I think it's a combination, right? Is that some of the research that we have going on, you're right, is that the absolute cutting edge in terms of what uh, is happening in a particular area. And, you know, I can think of, you know, maybe some of the work that's happening in, in our optics or in manufacturing that's really at the cutting edge. Um, but we are always looking at how we provide the uh, right um, uh, skills that are needed by uh, the industry that's around us, right? So if you look at our engineering, we certainly are looking at how do we respond to that um, in, in terms of modeling and simulation and all of the things that we already have here that our students can come out right away and contribute in, into, that, into that industry uh, locally. We also uh, think about that in terms of cybersecurity and other activities that are happening with, with Siemens and with Lockheed and uh, certainly with the defense industries and all of the work that we have going on with the space industry. Um, and the idea is that you are preparing people to work uh, immediately in those areas. Um, I think that's what we're gonna continue uh, to have to do. And, and to have that happen, what you need is to have a, um, the input that's necessary from uh, industry partners and business partners. And so advisory groups, there's a lot of advisory groups that we have uh, for business and for engineering and for other areas that actually advise on, you know, what is the curriculum? What is the need? I think we need to do the same thing also uh, uh, at the university level. Right, is that there? There needs to be a uh, overarching group that is really thinking about the entire uh, region and and what's needed within a broad within broad areas. So that I'm not the one saying exactly what's in the curriculum, but that we're thinking about strategically at the university where are investments needed and how do we move those forward so that they're also benefiting what we're trying to do uh, strategically within the region. So I think that alignment's gonna need to be there and we can we can work on that together. Uh, that dovetails nicely with the fact that we have a recently formed Orlando Tech Council. So maybe when we're looking for people to fill, fill that gap yeah. and uh, to find some of that, we can yeah, play a great. role. Uh, as I look through the, the comments on this, I see go Knights, hashtag go Knights, I see charge on. Obviously UCF has <laughs> some loyal fans. What are some of the things you think that UCF has done right to get to where it is now in terms of enrollment and research grants, et cetera? How, how, what's the magic here? It, it is the, honestly, when I look at it, a lot of it has to do with uh, attitude and belief in, in the institution and the fact that they weren't willing to settle and just say, okay, you know, we, we, we're okay right now and let's just stop there. It was always this, we could do more. And, and this willingness to step up and, and just do things and do them well. Um, you don't see that attitude everywhere. Uh, you don't see that attitude um, and belief uh, in, in lots of institutions. And so I think that's what it really boils down to is this can-do attitude, this innovative spirit that is here, that is prevalent within this university and a willingness to, to, to try things and some of them are gonna work, some might fail, but when you're innovative, when you're entrepreneurial, you're willing to always uh, try those things. And that's what I think sets us aside, is that uh, sets us apart from others, is that we, we have that willingness to try uh, to do things in a different way and to do it the UCF way, 
Um, you see that in our sports programs, right? Is that uh, we just basically came out of nowhere and we are now uh, UCF and we're everywhere. Um, that's what we want to do, certainly with everything else that we're doing in our academic programs as well. Uh, UCF football plays Houston on Saturday. Are you predicting a victory? I certainly am. I, I, I'm always predicting a victory. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good answer. <laughs> we we have we have we have a great. I mean, we just have great student athletes who've worked so hard uh, to be able to continue to be able to uh, to play, right? And and we see that in them, and I'm proud of what all they've done. Um, and now uh, uh, I want to see that also, and I want to see them uh, beat you soon. Um, that'll be exciting. We we certainly are always happy to see national success with all athletics. Um, both uh, basketball and football have sort of taken off and uh, brought some new eyes to Central Florida for sure. Yes. Uh, there's, there's a question in the comments. I wonder if you'd be um, comfortable addressing. Are there plans to engage and grow the collegiate esports community and atmosphere, as well as expanding to work with some high schools? Let's just get a little more general and say, are you aware of the esports community? And is that something that has been a topic of discussion uh, at your level? Um, it is. I have not had a lot of discussions uh, about esports here. I am very aware uh, of esports. Um, in fact, we started a program at my prior institution in esports and uh, we're able to recruit some amazing students to be part of that program. And um, and they made fun of me when they had me come and try to play some games and how terrible I was at it. Uh, I do think there's an opportunity here. I need to know a little bit more about where we are uh, before I say exactly what we can do. But I do understand the, um, the desire for people to be actively engaged in esports uh, at a university like ours. So I, I appreciate the question and I'll follow up on that because I, I haven't had, it's one of those things that's not made it up to the uh, top of the request yet, but but I certainly will look into it and, and we'll try to see what's the right thing for us to be doing. We are in a great region, so it, it almost seems to make a lot of sense to me and we just got to figure out how, how, how we'll do it. When you have a university that has the, the sheer breadth yeah that uh that ucf does it must be difficult to spot these up and coming technologies um it might be hard to even categorize esports as up and coming at this point but it must be tough for it to get the same dashboard time that uh some of the other things that are just churning out huge industry uh do you find that that's the case yeah um it, it depends on what What's happening, right? Uh, right now, this the first six months has been so focused on COVID is the biggest challenge, right? Is that I've only been at six months and we've had to spend so much time on that that I'd say that probably displaced a lot of uh, a lot of discussion around the future. But we're now starting to look at what are the future areas where we're going to be investing, what are we going to be doing, and so this is the right time for us to be asking questions about this. And the other thing I'll say about esports is. This is again an opportunity for a partnership, right? Is that there's got to be some companies that might be interested in sponsoring uh, and uh, working with us on what that would look like and giving all of those opportunities. So I, I just need to find out some more about it, but I'd love for us to, to think about what we could do there. President Cartwright, at the end of the day, this is a tech conference. Uh, can you humor us and tell us, are you an Android user or are you an iPhone user? I'm an electrical and computer engineer, so that would be wrong for me to like one technology more than another. Uh, I am technology agnostic. Uh, I, I appreciate the beauty in every technology that there is. Um, I do have an iPhone, uh, but uh, it, it doesn't mean anything. Um, it, it's just, uh, it's different, right? It's a different technology. Um, and I'm, I'm always aware that there's strengths in every technology and weaknesses in every technology. And uh, right now that's what we're using, so. As a, uh, in a different world when we had a different theme, I could do another hour just about that. <laughs> but I do wanna thank you so much. You're, you're very generous to have spent some time with us here at uh, Digital Orlando. Anything else you'd like to share with uh, anybody watching? 
I just want to thank them all for continuing to support UCF, right? Um, you know, we're an incredible institution that has made such progress. And if you look at our student body that's come in this past year, again, one of our best classes ever, GPAs, uh, incredible GPAs, wonderful uh, uh, to standardize test scores. And uh, our student body has grown again to uh, 72, roughly seven over 70,000 uh, for sure. Um, and it's because of the support that we get and because of the way that people talk about what UCF is and the quality that people are getting. So we appreciate you continuing to be supporters, you continuing to tell the great story about UCF and why UCF is a great place for people uh, to come and be successful. Uh, so thank you to everybody who is helping us with that. President Alexander Cartwright, sir, thank you for being so generous with your time. Have a great day. Thank you. So great to talk to you. You too. You can yes. hit that button. I'm trying to find it. Sorry. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, Thank everyone. you.